Hello, welcome down to another video right here on Theme Park Insanity where today I'm back at a very windy Flamingo Land Resort for the first time since the park's opening weekend back in March. Now today we're here to kind of sort of take a look at a few things. We're here to get back on some of our favourite rides. We're also here to try and check out the brand new Baby Red Panda Club that was obviously kind of been making the rounds and just generally see how the park's doing so many months on into the peak season. As I say, it's been a long time since we've been here, so without further ado, let's get inside Flamingo Land and see exactly how this park's doing at the peak of its season. So throughout today's vlog I'm going to be sharing a few tips and tricks to sort of visit Flamingo Land because of course some of you might be visiting for the first time and obviously since we come so often we kind of take it for granted. So the first thing really is which make sure that you do book your tickets online at least one week before you do visit. Now of course prices do vary but these are your standard admission prices you'll be paying on the day should you choose to just turn up and pay on the gate. So £52.50 for adults, family tickets 179 senior citizen 41 Disabled guest and free carer, that includes a free carer, it's 52.50. Children, of course, under three years, below free, it's all for the wind. Um, and as you can see, there are a few other prices too. They've also got uh, details regarding daytime shows and talks here. So, Pirates of Zanzibar show, there you can see obviously the times for that. The Sea Line show is at 12 pm, 2 pm, and 4 pm. Meet and greet Peter Rabbit, which takes up a uh, place up near Muddy Duck Cafe, Muddy Duck Farm up there. And then Keeper Talks, of course, Cheetahs, Hippos, Baboons, Tigers, Red Pandas and Penguins. Now, of course, we'll try and make the Red Panda one if we can. Hopefully, we'll get to see the baby one. But yeah, there you go. Right, OK, so we're in. And really quick and simple, scan your ticket at the barrier, all that good stuff. There's quite a queue over there. Now, we are into the summer season. And, of course, we're in August, so it's going to be busy around about this time of year. But I'll tell you something, it's lovely to be back. Um, we're obviously going to start off our day over on sick, that's an absolute must. They do have a single rider queue, so for me obviously that works out quite well. But yeah, it's lovely to be back, and more to the point, it's lovely to see the park this busy. Considering just how expensive tickets actually are for this place, and they are expensive, just bear that in mind. Yeah, it's nice to see it so busy here. So let's go over to sick and start our day with a ride on the 2022 Intamin Multi-Inversion Red B Coaster with those beautiful lap bars. Let's do this. And no, I will not be riding that monstrosity today. Although, a big shout out to Marcus from Thrill Riders, Sam Costello, Tom, and also Digital Dan, who rode that all day for charity. I don't know how you did it, lads, but you did well, trust me. Anyway, I'm going in this direction. Okay, let's do this into the single rider queue because of course I'm by myself. Let's go get a ride on sick. Unfortunately, I don't have a GoPro with me today, so I can't film on ride. But of course, we'll come back at a later date uh, with Matt, etc. And we'll film a few on ride POVs then. Quite the queue for the ride today. Of course, sick is the brand new headline signature ride for the park. So it's going to get big queues. And I've no doubt that single rider will probably be the same when you actually get inside the station. But it's good to see this busy. And more importantly, it's good to see this ride as popular as it actually is. Let's go grab a ride. Tell you something, there's no better way to start your day than with a ride on sick. That thing is running very smooth, a lot more comfortable. It's still a bit rattly on the train though, but I think that's just an intermin thing in all fairness. But yeah, absolutely brilliant. It's just it's running as well as it always has been. And yeah, a great way to start our day. Now, rather than just going straight back around and having another ride, because I'm tempted to do that, I'm gonna take a walk through the park and we'll go see how the rest of Flamingo Land's doing so far. So while we're taking a walk, just another little kind of sort of tip for anybody that might be visiting for the first time. Make sure that you plan your journey well in advance. If you are gonna be arriving later, then you run the risk of being put in the overflow car park, which incidentally is grass, literally. And if it's gonna be raining, it's gonna be quite hard to get off there. So we'd advise, or we'd, <laughs> I'd advise, arriving as early as possible. Now, the reason that I say that is yes, you might get kind of stuck in a bit of a queue coming in, but at the same time, 
you're going to get much better parking spaces and in all fairness you'll get your first pick of the rides now my original plan today was to kind of do a bit of a sort of how to spend your day video from England. that's not going to really work when it's as busy as this I mean even Hero <laughs> has a massive queue so it's not really feasible to do that obviously on the busier days you just kind of sort of get on what you get on and I don't kind of expect to get on as many rides today so obviously what I'm going to be doing is more sort of like checking in the park having a look around seeing how things are getting on I might get a few more rides towards the end of the day of course I'll get back on sick a few times but my main focus today isn't really rides in all fairness it's more to kind of sort of see how the park's getting on in the height of summer season and bring you guys a better look at it as well as a few tips and tricks along the way now as I said before I've got to say this is probably the busiest that it's been in a very long time however for those of you that are wondering coupons which was of course the bakery is now gone so instead of coupons you got the hero verse arcade with games machines claw machines and all that sort of thing instead of coupons bakery now I know which I'd rather have out the two you still got a bit of a food sort of like food outlet over there but yeah, a bit of a shame. But hey, if things don't work, they don't work. Next up, it's time for a ride on Cliffhanger, the park's shot and drop SNS Tower. However, unfortunately, at the moment, it's only running on the shot cycle, not the drop cycle, which is a bit of a letdown. But regardless, at least it's running. Let's go get a ride. <laughs> Okay, cliffhanger, not quite as forceful as it has been. It is only, as I say, on the shot, shot cycle. Try to get words out there. Um, and you don't get as much air time at the top. It feels like it's been toned down somewhat, which is a bit of a shame, but it's still good fun. And it's nice to get back on it. But yeah, we're gonna take a walk now. I'm gonna leave the major coasters, I think, for the time being, because we're gonna take a walk over towards where the red pandas are. Um, I mean, I might get on some of the rides along the way, but as I say, today's focus isn't really the rides. So let's take a wonder. Let's see where we end up. Today, operations seem pretty decent in all fairness. Every, well, I say everything, most things seem like they're running. Um, I haven't seen anything just yet that isn't. But yeah, it does look pretty promising. And obviously, considering now it is the summer season, you can expect bigger queues throughout the day. Now, the wait times so far don't seem to have been too bad because we only waited about 15, well, 10 or 15 minutes to get on to Cliffhanger. Uh, we looked at Kumali, that looks around about 40 minutes. Sick. I went straight up the single rider queue, but I had I have not done that. Potentially maybe an hour. I mean it is a packed headline attraction. And then of course Mumbo Jumbo has quite the queue as well. So yeah, the main rides obviously they're gonna draw the bigger queues. Even flip flop over there seems to have at least I say 30 to 40 minute wait. So just bear in mind that you know if you are planning a family trip here during the summer season, you're gonna be paying and then you're gonna be waiting. <laughs> That's the reality of it. Yes, you will get idiots in the background. That's what happens. It's called rock bombing. If you are watching this, then uh, <laughs> big shout out to you guys. But yeah, we're going to take a walk up towards the top end of the park now. Obviously, make his way through Dino Stone. And let's go see if we can spot the red pandas. So another tip for those of you that might be visiting Flamingo Land Resort for the first time as well, food and drink here is not exactly the cheapest. You can expect to pay between about sort of 10 to maybe 13, 14 quid for a meal, realistically. Some of them are cheaper than that. Even chips will set you back about two to three, maybe even sometimes four pounds. Now, 
yeah, it's a theme park. Yes, you are going to be paying a lot more than you would actually kind of expect anywhere else. And to be fair, some food up here, it's really nice. The only kind of sort of advice I will give is if you are planning on eating at Flamingo Land, then there is a lovely little place at the top end called the Coach House. Now the Coach House is kind of a pub and a bar grill. So it does open up outside of the park hours for those that live locally. And it does serve really nice food. Yes, again, it's not the cheapest, but it's certainly the best value for money where obviously eating here at the park is concerned. Now it does get quite busy obviously through the summer season. So if you are planning to come, I'd advise heading straight up as soon as it opens at 12 realistically to make sure that you do get yourself a spot. Other than that, potentially bring your own lunch with you. Now I've done that today. I brought sandwiches, I've been good. I could have bought food. And believe me, I could have eaten that chicken parmo that I love, but I brought sandwiches with me. So I'll be having a picnic. And there is plenty of little areas you can sit and chill, which I'll show you later on, and have some food outside of all the busy chaos of the park. So yeah, just another tip there for those that might be visiting here for the first time. So the one thing you might not expect and you might not know is that Flamingo Island has actually played host to a few Guinness World Records over the years. Now here in Dino Stone you have Twistosaurus which is a lovely little family spinning coaster and yes it is quite forceful. However, back in 2017 it was, the oldest person to ride the roller coaster actually rode this. He was 105 years old, which is absolutely incredible and again that's earned that ride there a Guinness World Record. However. Mumbo Jumbo also held a world record as well for the steepest drop on any roller coaster here in the UK or indeed worldwide when it opened up back in 2009. Now it features a drop of 112 degrees which is beyond vertical however that was of course taken away at a later date by Takabisha over in I think it's Japan or China uh, which obviously features about I think the drop's about 140 thereabouts so a lot lot steeper but regardless it's a title it held for quite some time. But there you go that's something you might not have known about the rides here at Flamingo Land. So here at Theme Park in Santa, you'll know that we always notice the smaller things. And one, things that we, one thing that we have noticed so far today is there is a lot more in the way of food and drinks outlets, as well as little games and things like that around the park. Now these are all new additions. So these two here, the Milk Churns game and also the ice cream, ice cream stand there are brand new. And there's also kind of others dotted throughout the park. Now there is a donut stand up there that's been there for a while, but also down near Cliffhanger, again, another donut stand there. And other additional food outlets dotted across the park too does make of course getting food and drink a lot lot easier and it's a lot more accessible too but as I said before as well you've got these little picnic areas which obviously you've got up here so plenty of seats in there and I mean that's just one of many where you can sit literally take five minutes out of your day and have some dinner which I'll be doing in a bit I don't think it's quite lunch time yet I'm tempted by donuts but I'm gonna be good <laughs> But yeah, you've got these lovely little areas like this. There's also loads of them up throughout the zoo as well, where you can sit and literally just chill out. So yeah, if you're gonna bring your own lunch, plenty of options. Okay, so yeah, I'm a bit hungry. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna sit down now and eat. So I've brought my own dinner as I say. I've got a few sausage rolls and stuff. I've got a sandwich there, muller rice. Not a few chocolate bars down there. And yes, I even have a bottle of Prime. <laughs> I've not been sucked in by the hype. That stuff, it actually is genuinely very, very nice indeed. I prefer ice pop over many of the other flavors, but. Yeah, anyway, the video's not sponsored in any way, shape, or form, just in case you're wondering. But yeah, I'm going to eat my lunch, and I'll take a walk up towards that end of the zoo. Okay, so I just had some lunch, and I've just walked up to where the zoo is, and something that some of you might not know, Flamingo Land has a dark ride. Now, Mischief Mansion is a family-friendly ghost train. It's not remotely scary in any way, shape, or form, and it's a great fun little addition to the park. But unless you know where to find it, you'll probably miss it, realistically. So, yeah. If you can find it, walk up towards kind of where the zoo is, where Muddy Duck Farm is, obviously as you go kind of past where Dino Stone is, and you'll find it here. Now I was going to take a ride, but unfortunately the queue is quite lengthy, so I think I'm going to be giving that one a miss today. But it is a great little addition to the park, and if you do get a chance, check it out. Now as well as the theme park, Flamingo Land itself plays host to a gigantic zoo as well. And make no mistake, it's absolutely massive. There is so much to see up here. Now realistically, you could probably spend a whole day just checking the zoo out itself without even going on the ride. So if you're going to make a kind of visit to Flamingo Land and you're visiting for the first time, potentially maybe try and plan your visit a bit if you do want to kind of sort of see both. The best way to do it, of course, would be to obviously sort of spend probably about half a day on the rides and then later half of the day head up to the zoo and take a look around the zoo. Now, 
there's so many different animals, so many different species. You've got your lions and tigers, you've got your baboons, you've got birds, you've got, you name it, there's probably, you've even got sea lions and you've got cheetahs and all that sort. I mean, there is so much to see. And alongside the animals, you also have the bird shows, which they do daily, twice a day. You've got the sea lion shows, which again, they do daily, twice a day. And you've got keeper talks all over the zoo too. So there is so much to see up here. As I say, if you are gonna kind of visit here for the first time, try and plan your visit if you can because it's well worth checking the zoo out if you do get the time. Okay, so we're just up where the red pandas are and I do keep a talks at 1.45, so we'll pop back in a bit. It's still quite early for that, but we've just been up there and obviously normally you get a better view on the other side of there. So you can usually see the red pandas themselves over on those little kind of platforms and gangways. Now, one of them has climbed right up into the tree up there. But unfortunately, there's no cub. And to be perfectly honest, actually, I'm, I'm kind of obviously guessing how small the cub must be at the moment. I think it is probably a little bit early for it to be out and about. But you never know. You know, at the feeder talk later on, who knows, might even bring it out to come and say hi. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, red pandas, when you can see them, they are gorgeous. They're, they're very dangerous and they can be quite vicious, so don't think that they're cute and cuddly because they're anything but, but at the same time, they are very, very beautiful to look at. So hopefully when we come back later on, we'll do the keeper talk, and who knows, we might even get a glimpse of the cub itself. So we're just taking a walk down towards Lost River Ride. Tempted to ride it today, but I don't really fancy getting soaking wet today. But as we can see, still no replacement roof up there on the final drop. And although you can't really kind of see it right now, there is actually repair work kind of to the trough itself going down the drop there too. So the ride obviously has undergone some maintenance, but yeah, we'll take a walk down and watch people get absolutely drenched and for once in our lives, watch us stay dry. Fingers okay. crossed. And in other news, the waterfalls are back on now as well. But you do get absolutely soaked coming down that drop there. So let's wait for one of the boats to come round. And I think I might film myself a little slow-mo. Now one of the things that was new last time we came was the brand new Flamingos enclosure and I'm literally walking up to it now and they're all actually out and about. Now by the looks of it you can also get into the viewing area which is great because of course last time it was all closed off due to avian flu. So let's take a walk inside and have a look at these lovely Flamingos. <laughs> So here we go, we're stood inside the indoor viewing area, which by the way is absolutely beautifully themed. Lots of theming kicking around, I'm not going to show too much because of course there's a family over there, but yeah, you get a really good view of the flamingos themselves, which are actually the second uh, flock of flamingos that they have here, or flock or whatever you call, I assume it's a flock, but there we are. <laughs> they are birds after all. But yeah, it's actually the second flock that the park owns, so the original flock of them still exist up at the far end of the park. But you've also got these guys down here now as well. So for those of you wondering, does Flamingo Land have flamingos? Yes, it does. Lots of them. Let me know in the comments, who else can picture a lovely RMC hybrid running across the back of those trees there? Yes, there is lots of land behind there. And as far as I'm aware, they can actually develop it. So I don't know, I could see something like that fitting in really well there. And it certainly contrasts nicely against Kumali. And speaking of Kumali, let's go grab a ride.
Okay, so I was going to go and get a ride on Mumbo Jumbo, but given how busy that queue is, it says 30 minutes, it's more like probably 40 to 50 at a push. Potentially even an hour maybe, it's not 30 minutes. So don't take queue times as gospel. <laughs> That's another tip I'm going to give you. If you look at the queue times and you think it looks more than that, chances are it is more than that. If it looks less than that, the chances are it's probably less than that. At the end of the day, if you come to theme parks often, you can usually gauge it pretty well yourself. And looking at that, that's no 30 minute queue. Right, so as you can see behind me, the sky starts to turn quite grey, quite dark. So it's not raining yet, but there's every chance it's probably about to start raining. In fact, I've literally just felt a drop of rain then. I'm gonna go grab another ride on sick. And then if it starts raining, I think I'm gonna call it a day. But considering I didn't expect to get on many rides today, I feel like I've actually done pretty well. And we've seen quite a fair bit. I brought you a look at a lot of the changes that have taken place, a lot of new additions. Obviously, we've had a bit of a look at the red pan. Unfortunately, we didn't get up to the top of 45. But at the end of the day, you know, it's still early days for the club as well. It's still very, very young. The chances of them actually putting it out into the enclosure at the age it's at is very slim. So it's fair to say we probably wouldn't have seen it anyway at this moment. But of course, we are heading back at least one more time before the end of the year. And with that in mind, we'll definitely try and have another look for the Red Panda when we come next time. But without further ado, let's go get on sick and potentially have our final ride of the day. Well, the heavens are warm, truly opened up now. I managed to get three back to back rides on sick before it started absolutely throwing it down. So, while it's raining, let's take a quick look in the shop because we've got a few new bits of merchandise. We've got this lovely lentacular sick magnet, which looks really nice. Sadly, no price is kicking about. Oh, no, no, that's the, uh, the one there, so that probably might be a bit more. We've also got some lovely new key rings over, as well, over here as well. So, sick logo there. And then like a little flamingo land thing on the back there. Other than that, you've got your bog standard ones here that we had last year. You've also got these glass ones, which are quite nice. So glass cut. Sick logos. Prices for you there. Crystal, 4 6 50 there for the new bespoke key rings. I still want to see some pin badges. Unfortunately, that's not something we're seeing at the moment. You've also got little teddies with sick logo on now, which is quite nice too. It's nice that they're kind of branching out a little bit and creating more merchandise branded to the ride. And then of course you've got your photos over there which you can get if you want to do. Other than that, not a massive amount of change. You've still got a lot of clothing in here of course, obviously been given the fact it's sick. The barbers of course has completely and utterly gone. So it's now just another sort of clothing area. And yes, it's absolutely belting it down out there. So there we go. Let's head out of the park and wrap up our day here at Flamingo. So the one thing that Flamingo Land do do is the refillable souvenir cups now. Of course, the more you get, the less it costs. So for one cup, 16 quid, 14 for two or 12 each for free. You can also reactivate at a price of nine pounds a day. So only slightly more expensive than the freestyle cups at the Merlin Parks. But of course, being the fact that they're actually Flamingo Land, so they are branded to Flamingo Land there as well. So yeah, in case you weren't aware, you can also get those here too. So that wraps up our day here at Flamingo Land and it's been a fantastic day. It's been great to be back. We've seen a lot of changes. There's been a lot of improvements since we came last time. And a lot of the rides that weren't working last time, of course, now are running as well. Operations as a rule seem to have been really good. Six running absolutely fantastically today. And overall, yeah, great to see Flamingo Land coping this well in the height of the summer season. But of course, I would love to know, have you guys visited Flamingo Land this year? Or indeed, are you planning to visit? Do let me know in the comments below guys if now if you have enjoyed this video please consider hitting the subscribe button turning on those notifications and again if you have smash the like button and let me know it's always really appreciated and i'm joe 
This is Theme Park Insanity and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, bye bye.